have to admit, I was wrong about altcoins. I've been pushing altcoins on this channel so long that I've gotten to the point where Bitcoin's barely in my portfolio. And that might be a stretch. Altcoins are really what gets my blood pumping, and pumpamentals are what gets me up in the morning. We've had intense discussions about whether or not actual utility and use case is even important when it comes to watching your gains rise. However, I've stumbled across some information so mind-blowing that it's changed everything for me when it comes to my investment strategy. While it's a bit embarrassing, I have to give you the lowdown so you can get the gains that I've missed out on. Let's get it. Welcome to BitBoy Crypto. My name is Ben. Every day I show you how to make money in cryptocurrency. If you like money, then make sure to hit that subscribe button and tap the bell for notifications. Also, make sure you have notifications turned on inside your YouTube account or you won't know when my videos come out. Guess YouTube wants you to be poor. In this video, I'm going to be sharing some super secret information with you guys that I've learned over the last few weeks and it's left me flabbergasted to say the least. Well, I guess flabbergasted has a lot of letters, so I could have probably said less, but I digress. Recently, I signed up for a token research site called Santiment, and I've been very impressed. You can check it out at research.bitboy.live. But this video is not about me pushing a ref link. I want to discuss an article they wrote that put the ultimate crypto proposition to the test. Does utility matter? And by utility, we basically mean how much is an altcoin getting used? Will a project perform better in your portfolio if it's being used than it will be if it's not being used? It's a big question. Many people, including myself, have argued that the main thing that matters during a bull run are a project's pump of minerals. Now, let's break that down. What we mean there is the tokenomics and investment proposition of a project. For instance, if a project is deflationary versus inflationary, what the circulating supply is and how the remaining supply enters circulation, whether it contains intrinsic value generators like staking mechanism, yield farming, or future airdrops. Often those factors determine whether or not the price of an asset will go up or it will go down and how fast it will get there. For instance, many yield farming coins, and I learned this the hard way, offer absolutely huge APY returns, but the tokenomics make it where yield farmers are forced to sell off their tokens every time they get a payday, and this forces the price down of an asset. We saw that with Moonswap, Yield Wars, and many other projects. These are called dumpamentals. They may be good projects, but the tokenomics dictate a price fall. And you guys saw when I was involved with those, the amount of money I lost. At some point, these prices and APY returns level off. And then the projects can reverse course and the projects can flourish. The point is, you can have a great project with terrible dumpamentals that push the price down. On the flip side, you can have a terrible project with great pump of minerals that pushes the price to the moon. This is what I've been telling you guys and feel like experientially we've seen time and time again. But what have I told you, and this is the most shocking thing you've ever heard me say on this channel. What if I was wrong? <laughs> what if I was wrong about altcoins? Dump of minerals and pump of minerals are not the most important things. In fact, utility, use case, and fundamentals are actually underlying your portfolio's value. Turns out, that could actually be true. Who would have thought? What do you guys think? Do you guys think fundamentals matter? Drop me a comment down below and let me know. But Santiment did a study where they tested the question, does a portfolio of fundamentally sound projects perform any better than what they call the benchmark? And by benchmark, they mean simply hodling Bitcoin without trading, selling tops, or buying bottoms. Sandiment decided to only take ERC-20 tokens into consideration here. So it would have been extremely interesting to see what the results would have been with coins such as Chainlink, Tron, EOS, Cardano, and others. But right now, thanks to Uniswap, ERC-20s are once again the name of the game and the darlings of crypto crackheads, like myself. But Sandiment started with three basic criteria to choose their coins. The ERC-20 had to have a market cap above a million dollars, over 20 daily active addresses, and an average on-chain transaction volume above $100,000. Setting this fairly loose criteria allowed the backtest to eliminate illiquid coins while focusing on assets that had at least some prospects for adoption. 
Sandimit was careful not to make the criteria too restrictive as this could have thrown off the test. The point was to find out if a wide range of coins with decent fundamentals could outperform Bitcoin. Not only take the top handful of coins, we already know they would probably perform better. The test would basically consist of hypothetical buys of every ERC-20 that fit the qualifications and criteria of the test on the first day of each month. At the end of the month, the portfolios were rebalanced. Now, this is due to the fact that during some months, some of the ERC-20s fit the criteria, and then some months they didn't. To get the test just right, projects would only go in the portfolio for months that they met the criteria. The tests were done not only pitting the ERC-20s versus Bitcoin, but also versus Ethereum itself. Now, the back test would be done in two time frames. The first would go back about two years, and the second would go back one year. So let's see how the portfolios fared in this back test. Basically, the two portfolios showed some ups and downs, but ultimately after two years, all three of the portfolios were in a dead heat. Our portfolio returned 150% returns, which no one could shake a stick at. Actually, why would anyone shake a stick at anyone or anything? I guess that's beside the point. But we need to stick to the topic at hand. The place where the ERC-20 portfolio really fell behind was in particular between July and December 2019. This portfolio fell over 60% during that time. And interestingly enough, there was a strong correlation between this tumble and the rise of Bitcoin dominance. During this time, BTC dominance was coming in around 70%. So no wonder our alts got crushed. But here's what's really interesting about the two-year test. During 2020, our ERC-20 portfolio with strong fundamental projects absolutely exploded. It made up a ton of ground and basically caught the Bitcoin benchmark. Take that, maxi pads. Pretty weird, my channel has also exploded in 2020. You're welcome, you degenerates. Unless you're bad at math, though, and understanding trends, you probably know where the one-year test results are going to be heading to. The one-year back test of ERC-20s absolutely destroyed Ethereum and Bitcoin and it isn't even close. In the past one year, the ERC-20 portfolio scorched at a plus 170% return. Ethereum itself didn't fare too badly at 115% gain. Meanwhile, Grandpa BTC coming in at a meager 38% gain. I can tell you this, if I had to deal with only a 38% gain, I would probably neck. Who could feed their family on 38% gains? I guess you may could make do with ramen and mayonnaise sandwiches. But in all seriousness, though, of course, a 38% gain on any asset is great. But we have different standards in the world of crypto. And this ERC-20 portfolio has even met our high expectations. At the peak of DeFi madness, this portfolio was a maddening 270% plus gain. Meanwhile, at their peaks, Bitcoin came in at 90% and Ethereum came in at 160%. So at its peak, Bitcoin was about 50% as good as where our portfolio is sitting now after the crash. And once again, after the crash, our portfolio now is sitting better than Ethereum was at its peak. So this begs the question, after examining these charts, do project fundamentals matter? And on some level, the answer is a resounding yes. But notice the criteria selected for this test. It's not strength of team or the chance to solve whatever problem they made up to solve. It is more on-chain fundamentals like daily active addresses and on-chain transaction volume. These factors seem to play a strong role when determining a good fit for a portfolio. And I have to be honest with you, these are things I didn't really check for much. But going forward, these are factors I will be taking into consideration for my portfolio. I think the most important lesson to take here is that when it comes to choosing the right altcoins, you need to choose projects that have activity and are liquid. I know in the past I've been guilty of finding projects that have great use case, partnerships, teams, and much more. You would think that those would be the things that matter. When in fact, they matter almost zero compared to the other metrics we've been comparing here. Get projects that people are clearly using for transactions, not necessarily using for their actual use case per se, and your portfolio will thank you. In addition, if you would like to sign up for Santiment to get insights like these, you can do so by visiting research.bitboy.live. You can be on the lookout for many more videos based on their insights because I've been extremely impressed so far with what I've seen. Now, you may not know this, but Santiment also has their own token you can find on CoinGecko. It's one I'm going to start keeping my eye on. That's all I got. Be blessed. BitBoy out.